The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 221 Family Chaos White Chocolate's foyer couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a flurry of activity or as still as a tombstone. Mom! Jem Charles finally complained. What gives? The mare herself was panting, ears flat, clearly fighting back a panic attack. We'll... we'll just have to... Her visible eye dilated. My apologies, Gerardo assured, taking up a more visible stance in the center of the room. My apologies, Gerardo assured, taking up a more visible stance in the center of the room. Had we any clue they would have been so prompt, I assure you, we would have found a gentler way to break the news to you beforehand. And the danger is hopefully not real. As it stands, all that's being dealt with is a mere chance of flood. A flood? White chocolate paled even further, wobbling. Gerardo shrugged. Well, I've only seen maps and had to trust that the somewhat counterintuitive simulations would be correct, but that is indeed what would happen if the defense force succeeds in blowing up the water district dam. At that, white chocolate promptly fell over. Hayseed was out of sight in a flash, catching her substantial weight on a strong back, while Starlight and Jam Jars shot Gerardo identical glares. Really? They intoned as one. Gerardo gulped, taking in White Chocolate's reaction. Perhaps there was a more tactful way of putting that. The room held its awkward silence for one second longer, before a foal broke it with a warbling, rooster-like scream. Ah! <laughs> Down! From there, everything devolved into chaos. Mom? Hayseed struggled under white chocolate's weight as Gerardo blinked and Jam Jar's face hoofed, a cacophony of foals racing past, some hoarding their possessions and others joining the racket for the sake of making a racket. Mom, you're heavy. Are you all right? Whew, white chocolate moaned, struggling to get her hooves under her. I need to lie down, but there's no time for that. Go get your brothers and sisters together so we can move them. Jam Jars, give me that paper. Jam Jars blinked crossly at her. Mom, you look like a beached whale. Let me have this. I can be in charge. As if to emphasize her point, she summoned an orange telekinetic glow that was practically lost in her massive mane, seized the tail of a passing filly and grounded her with a thump. As two more charged in to take the downed Philly's place of yodeling panic, Maple tromped in from the leftmost corner, mane undone and streaming with water. What's going on in here? she asked, a note of fear to her voice, looking decidedly smaller with her entire coat plastered to her sides. They didn't deliver the notice already, did they? Gerardo coughed. I may have had a a momentary lapse of judgment in which information would be useful, and which would cause undue panic. Maple! White Chocolate lurched her way to the dripping mare, mane and tail growing disheveled, panic in her eye. I don't know what to do. I've never taken them all outside at once before. While the chaos unfolded, Starlight slunk her way across the room to the stairwell where Jamjar stood, doing an excellent job of appearing in control while doing absolutely nothing. Hey, you! She pointed a hoof at jam jars. What does that paper say? How long do we have until we need to be out of here? Jam jars frowned, as if she wanted to tell Starlight to mind her own business, and then smirked, reaching down to take Starlight's hoof and help her onto the staircase. Say, she began mischievously, eyes flashing. You're smart, right? Want to be my second in command? Starlight blinked. Huh? Look at them! Jam Jar swept a hoof at the alarmed room, moving from an uncertainly shuffling Gerardo to a soaked maple to white chocolate who was sworn by foals and infinitely too overwhelmed to take charge. They have no idea what they're doing. Mom's always been that way, cause she let our family get in this big of a mess in the first place, but that griffin just freaked everyone out and your wet bomb isn't doing anything to help any pony. Hayseed is too busy being a goody four shoes to get with the program. Snow's a wuss and everyone else is too young. She gave a snort of exasperation and tossed her gigantic mane. Obviously, someone who actually knows what they're doing needs to take charge. 
So, do you want to be my second in command or not? Wait a minute. Stolid's brow furrowed. You're actually trying to be helpful? I remember all that stuff you did last night. Oh, what stuff? Jam Jars tossed her mane again. You have to admit, he was being awkward enough to deserve it before I even said anything. Besides, I just wanted to see what you were made of. She huffed and looked back out at the sea of chaos in the foyer, several heaps growing where foals were stacking belongings they didn't want to part with. So yeah, I am. My family's a mess, but someone's got to do it. Are you in? As long as you don't bug me about who I like again, Starlight accepted, glowering. Now can I see that paper? Jam Jars hit her mouth with a huff. Hehe, <laughs> well, fine. Just remember, the harder you try to keep a secret, the more egg you'll have on your face when it gets out. Here. She turned the evacuation notice to Starlight in her mouth, still talking around it. It says we got until tonight, so I don't think we should leave right away. It's probably disgusting out there, and we'll cool off when the sun sets. So we need to think of a way to calm these morons down so they don't use all their energy now and can still walk when they need to. She lifted an eyebrow, the notice threatening to slip free of her little teeth. You have that magic thing you did. Think you can make all of them freeze to cool their heads? Starlight frowned, studying the paper. It says to go to Grand Acorn, but they're also moving part of Copswood, and isn't that big? It'll probably be crowded, so the earlier you get there, the better place you'll be able to get. They'll probably be packing ponies into warehouses and stuff at the end. Jam jars looked like she had swallowed a lemon. Eh, you're right. She shook a hoof, Gerardo in the background making a feeble attempt to rally order. But we'll never get them organized enough to move quickly. Her eyes brightened. Unless we could send someone ahead to pick out a spot and keep everyone else out. Your griffin looks like he could... They were interrupted by a knock at the door. Again? Jam Jars pouted. Great. Now it's probably some sales pony thinking they can... She flung the door open and was silenced. Ah, good morning, fillies. How curtsied, standing with his wings folded and his back to the road. Listen, um, Starlight... I know you all told me to keep a lookout since I'm slightly intimidating and all that, but I saw a stallion handing out warnings and heard the most awful racket from within these walls, and fate compelled me to see if you needed assistance. He blinked at jam jars. Also, your staring is making me really uncomfortable for some reason. Starlight was about to say something vindictive regarding him and Maple, but was interrupted by a wide smile breaking across Jam Jars' face. She clutched what was left of her cheeks, most of the available room taken up by teeth. Your mane, she gasped, is amazing! I need, need, need the name of your stylist! <laughs> How chuckled nervously, rubbing the back of his neck. Please, hold your applause, my good citizen. The Howinator isn't actually used to having it be appreciated. How? Starlight interrupted. Can you go away? Everyone is freaking out inside and Maple and Gerardo can't get it under control and the last thing we need is more noise. She stomped a hole for emphasis. More noise, you say? How pushed his head past him, eyeballing the room and grinning devilishly. On the contrary... I feel more noise is exactly what the situation calls for. Behold! He brandished his cutie mark, a brilliant red megaphone, and an exact likeness of it appeared in his forehoofs. He tossed it up, caught it in a wing, held it to his muzzle, and bellowed into the house, Greetings, friends and neighbors all! Would you mind toning it down a notch so old Howe can take the stage? The house stopped, frozen by the volume of his blast. Maple and White Chocolate's ears were already down. They covered them anyway. Gerardo shrugged off a wince, looking incredulously to the doorway. Most of the fillies and colts were petrified. Curious ears swiveled Howe's way for more. How lowered his voice. That's cool. Very cool. The Howinator is proud of you all, little children. Now... Go listen to your mother, or something. Smugly, he let the magical megaphone dissolve into whatever ether it had formed from. 
Now, how is that for a showstopper? I told you I would be useful to have around. Back in the house, a foal began crying, triggering the caterwauling to resume. Well, Maple gulped, her coat halfway dry. This is an improvement, I guess. And yet, still so far to go, Gerardo lamented. Somehow, I don't believe effective parenting is supposed to work this way. They stood in front of a carefully closed wooden door, along with White Chocolate and Howe. White Chocolate kept eyeing the latter apprehensively, her two smallest folds held with one foreleg. Jam jars waited smugly behind, with Starlight trying to strike a balance between getting too close to or too far from the filly and Hasey watching both carefully. Snowshoe was too busy trying to jam together an old suitcase in his room to bother anyone, as was one other of the elder foals. The remaining five were locked in a bedroom. Now, you two, White Chocolate hummed, still looking dazed as she rocked the foals in her grip. Let's get you napping so I don't need to watch you, and then we can let the others out of their forced timeout. Jam jars blanched. Where? This is their room. You wouldn't let Snow watch over them, would you? In my bedroom, White Chocolate answered. And we'll just have to hope that someone sends help for ponies who have trouble moving on their own. I'm certain there are elders in this town who won't be able to walk that far. How, threw a salute. Want me to go scan the crowds? Traveling by air is a feat they can only dream of performing themselves. Thanks. White Chocolate swallowed. I'll help you put those two to bed, Maple offered, her coat spiky from the drying water. I've got something I'd like to ask you about anyway. They retreated together through the corridors of the underground bungalow, none of the others following along. What is it? White Chocolate hummed when they were sufficiently out of earshot, apparently sensing it wasn't meant to be shared. Maple's ears folded. Not anything important. I just... Have a better place now to put that thing I asked you to hang on to for me. Oh, White Chocolate's face fell. So I guess it really was just a promise for this morning. N no Maple stammered. I didn't mean like that. I... Her shoulders slumped. I talked to some ponies about helping you. Important ones. If Farron wanted you back and your whole family, would you want him, too? White Chocolate sighed, pushing open the door to her darkened bedroom with a shoulder, her bed sitting plush and empty with only a single depression from the previous night. That's a big if, Maple. He knew what he was leaving behind. You do, too. If, Maple swallowed, if you could run away, like him, but taking your entire family with you to a place where they'd be cared for and you could live without all the memories of this place in Ironridge, would you do it? If only the decision was in the way, and all the logistics were taken care of, that sounds like what we're doing right now. Defeated, White Chocolate slumped, then moved to the dresser where she had stashed her moon glass before. I heard your friend. He said we were evacuating from a threat of flood because the defense force wanted to blow up the water district dams. Does it matter if any of us want to keep our old memories, bitter or sweet, if all it takes is one explosion to wash them all away. Maple stepped forward and squeezed her shoulder despite her wet coat. I don't really know. Here's your orb, White Chocolate finished, dredging up the artifact with far less trouble than she had had finding the obsidian earlier. I spent some time staring at it last night. I hope you don't mind. I just hope... She sighed and hoofed it over. I hope that sometime... I got something to hope for. Silently, Maple accepted the orb, tucking it away and into her cutie mark when White Chocolate wasn't looking. She felt a familiar twinge of her muscles, reminding that she wouldn't be able to carry it for long. But that didn't matter, then and there. I won't leave Ironridge, she assured, feeling White Chocolate's coat against hers. Until you do. I promise. End of chapter 221.